Hey everybody, so this is going to be a super exciting video because it's very, very, very last minute, maybe last second. Anyways, here's the story. So, you got to hear the story before we start building this terrarium for salamanders. Uh, as you might know about me, I'm mostly into chameleons, but anyways, I'm launching a, let's call it a wildlife protection project or something, but anyways, so my parents live out in the East Bay of California's Bay Area, and as most of the country might know, we're experiencing some of the worst drought we've had in decades and decades. So, uh, with that being said, a lot of amphibians have sought kind of really selective homes, such as, for my family's sake, uh, we actually had this old wood pile that was sitting there for decades, my entire life. The wood pile had been there at least since I was only, I don't know, two years old or so. So it's been there basically my whole life. I'm 26 now. So over the years that thing's been rotting and decomposing and basically creating its own little habitat inside. All kinds of bugs and critters, uh, rabbits and ground squirrels and such have made their homes in there, even snakes maybe. But anyways, because of all the dryness, the, the layers and layers of wood have also created a home for amphibians, such as salamanders. So while my family over the last uh, few months have basically been uh, over the last few months, my family has been moving that wood pile because we plan on using that land to build like a little um, house behind my parents' house out in the country where they have enough land to build more on the property. So they want to build like a little cottage or something. But anyway, this old wood pile had to get moved. But as they started doing it, they discovered some salamanders they told me about. And I love creatures of that nature, especially salamanders. I have a marbled salamander named Scrappy already just because I wanted to have a salamander. Anyways, salamanders, uh, or at least marbled ones, are not naturally found in California. However, the yellow-eyed Encenta is. And that's what I discovered the salamander that they were finding was. And um, they're not endangered, luckily, but nonetheless, the particular habitat it's from that was found in my parents' place, that particular location, the population is just dwindling. It's slowly dying off because of all the dryness and they have very few homes. So instead of allowing my parents to destroy their home and move this, this wood pile that had been their forever home, uh, I told them they needed to start gathering these things and they moved most of the pile before gathering any of them. And when I say most, I, honestly, I mean all of it. The whole wood pile had been already moved. And this weekend I got to see it and I started digging through there thinking, oh my gosh, these salamanders are going to start drying up because the layers of wood was what was holding in the moisture for them. Without all those layers on any given hot day, the moisture that was saving their lives was going to start evaporating and disappearing and their home would be gone and there's nowhere wet enough to keep them alive within walking distance for a salamander. So I knew they were going to die, all of them. That was just too saddening. So um, even though I didn't have enough time to find any myself, although I did look for a little while this weekend, um, I asked them, urged them to look themselves. Today, my mom found a few of the yellow eyed and sent us. So we're gonna build a terrarium real quick right now and take care of them, give them a home and let them, you know, grow, live, maybe reproduce. And then when the drought is over, maybe I can take them back to their home. Okay, this is the exciting unveiling. My mom said she found a total of five, sadly. I think she manhandled one of them and it died. I don't know what it was, but when she showed it to me, sadly there was one of them already dead in these jars. She just gave me silly jars. There's one little guy, very young looking. Here's a little guy, I need to wash my hands. Always wash your hands when handing salamanders. The bacteria on your hands will be absorbed in their skin and can kill them. Okay, so I've washed my hands. Uh, I can handle the salamanders, but I don't actually want to. I want to build their terrarium first. We're gonna start with what is the usual, which is some layers of rocks that will be used for draining the water. Okay, so um, I got these rocks from, who are they? The Giro, the Giro, they sell big bags of rocks for like four bucks. Um, just to be safe, I'm rinsing them in a strainer just to make sure there's no crap that could be harmful to them. I'm gonna cover the whole bottom in these rocks. So, 
Okay, so this is just gonna be my starting layer. I'm gonna create uh, basically like a hillside that will have a little area for them to swim around in if they want to do that. Um, again, wash your hands. So this is gonna be mostly for the draining area. And you can use screening, which I suggest, but since this is kind of emergency uh, fast setup, the first time I'm doing this, I'm just gonna use paper towels, which I've seen also used, um, which is gonna just separate your rocks from the substrate or dirt you use, okay? I'm gonna get some more rocks, actually. <laughs> okay, so I ended up getting some more rocks just because I want the rock, the base of their water to be a rock bed. They might like it more than just glass. I'm gonna do use two pieces of this. It's gonna be a little setup I use just for a few days and then eventually I'll make a more permanent setup for them. Um, all right, so now we're gonna add some coconut fiber substrate right here, which I've heard um, is good because it doesn't have a pH that's harmful to them. Certain soils you might use might have fertilizers which will have a pH that can kill them. For this I'm using the Eco Earth Loose coconut fiber substrate. substrate. That should be enough for now. Hmm. Probably need more. Just a little bit, cover up all the ugly paper towel, which I don't like, but for now it's a necessary evil, I suppose. It'll make cleanup uh, possible, whereas if you don't use some kind of a mesh or paper towel to separate your rocks from your dirt, it's impossible to separate them basically otherwise. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some dried sphagnum moss and some habitat type additives. Um, I don't have any really good aquatic type plants for them at the moment, but I'll get some. Um, and then put some bark pieces in there for them to climb under and such. Okay. Where did this thing Okay, so I'm going to add this fun little natural piece of bark that creates a semicircle type dome for them to crawl under. I'm sure some of them will like that. Now I'm going to wet down all this dirt so that it's a little bit more compacted. Otherwise, really loose. Let's use two of them. Alright, so that's enough for right now to be habitable, just for right now, so I'm going to let them finally out of these jars. My mom just put them in dang ball jars. Anyways, they need to get out of here. I'm sure they're dying to get out. Okay, So I changed the camera and got some extra lighting so you can see this part. This is the fun part. So these are totally wild caught, yellow eyed and centas. Really cute, very popular and uh, common in Northern America, uh, California, Northern California. 
This little guy is squeezing between giant bark pieces, which could hurt him. Get out safely, please. There he is. He's a little youngin. Very small. Some bark they came with that my mom probably included here. And my mom said there was more, but I don't see anything else. Unfortunately, I don't see anything else in this jar, so we're going to get the big boy now. There's a one mostly full-grown Incenta with us here today, and he is dying to get in here as well. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's a beauty. He's just doing marvelously, and he's very friendly already. He's crawling on my head when he wasn't going. Alright, I'm going to miss them just because they are probably dehydrated right now. I want them to survive. They've been living almost, almost 14 hours in a jar probably. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to check the rest of the jar and um, we'll see how that goes. All right, we have a big fully grown one here. So the last one you saw was actually only a teenager. This Incenta is definitely more close to full grown. Um, all right, well, as you can see, the light turned off, but here we go. Here the beauty is. He's totally dry, needs to be rehydrated. I can't focus. It, it won't focus on him. Manual. Point it at him. Wait, 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 keep it on the ground. There you are. Beauty. Wait, which one focuses? They both do. There's two of them. And they're focusing oh, on okay. okay well, there we'll you go. You need some mist. It doesn't matter. They're not going to hear you. Okay, I'm going to go get another light because I want you to be able to see this. Okay, so in the last of this video, I'm going to add a cute little pond for them to basically be able to swim around, get wet when they want to. He's never been able to do that in his life before, probably. Man, does he like it. Oh, he's a little frog. You probably want to get a swim, too, don't you? Get a little swim. Get a little swim. Get a little swim. Oh, oh. Too fast. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they like it, don't they? They're just chilling in their hot tub. <laughs> Chubby. Chubby's too big to fit. <laughs> They'd both have to clear out first. And I think they're really enjoying what it means to be in water like that for the first time in their life, maybe. Anyways, again, thanks for watching. I'm going to find out how to sex these guys and separate the males and females, probably. So. Alright, so thus far, I don't know if there's any kind of foundation or something that um, rescue, rescues specifically amphibians, because there's a lot of micro uh, biodiversity, you know, little areas where a very specific newt 
salamander frog or something lives and they don't live anywhere else in the world. And you know what? That's what it means to be a defender of wildlife, people. Oh yeah, you gotta earn that. Just kidding. Or you can just go to the local B of A and sign up. I don't work at B of A, I'm not sponsored. Anyway, um, yeah, so if anyone watching this video knows about some kind of group that is um, trying to defend the amphibians in the Bay Area or anywhere in America, let me know. I might be willing to just send these guys there and make sure they're well taken care of. And when the drought in California is over, if ever, we can return them to where they belong in the hills of the East Bay. Anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, yeah, and feel free to leave comments. I will read all of them. Thanks for watching.